In this film, I want to think about what signals the need for an intervention. When do we put strategies in place? When are parents called in? When are teams set up? When's training sought? When are resources bought? I started my last two films with a tweet. This one begins with something a parent said to me. And it was, she said, does school say my son doesn't need friends because he's happy on his own, but he's lonely? The interventions, the strategies, all that doing tends to happen when people show distress or when they disrupt the routine of the classroom. We respond to that active signalling signaling of need, but the need was there before the signal. Autism is a hidden difference, but a very real one. When people say to me, you don't look autistic, I always think, you should see my brain. <laughs> By taking that difference as significant, whether it's being signalled through behaviour or not, you can not only prevent the behaviour signalling that could disrupt your classroom, but you can help more children. The changes that you make in their lives now are, and I know it sounds dramatic, but it's so true, they are life changing. You have an incredible job. It might feel mundane to you when you like wake up on a Monday morning and struggle to get up or can't find your car keys. And it might feel routine as you fill out form after form and deal with mounds of paperwork and sit through dull staff meetings. But what you do is extraordinary. You know, these moments of care, these moments of thought and reflection change the direction a child is travelling in. You know, if they're heading this way and you just nudge them slightly that way, over time, what was, you know, they were going to end up over here and they end up over here. It's two completely different destinations and you were that difference. You won't see it where you're stood in their lives, but when they get to where I'm stood, they'll be able to look back and see what you did to them, what those moments of insight caused, triggered in their lives. Um, I, I was never a problem to my teachers. I was very happy to abide by rules. I was quiet. I did all of my work. I was clever. There was no need to help me. But I kept a diary when I was in primary school. I was about seven. It wasn't a written thing. I drew it. And I didn't draw what I had done that day. I drew what I would have done if I'd had a friend. Outside of school, I knew people, but inside of school, at that time, my playtimes were spent hiding behind a tree or locked inside a toilet cubicle. The problems of a seven-year-old don't seem that big in an adult world, but the impression of that time over my lifetime has been huge squashed something in me. I saw the other children having friends, but I didn't know how they'd done it. Autistic people have differences with social communication. I had somebody taken the time to help me make some friends back then. It probably wouldn't have taken much to do, and it would have been absolutely life-changing. I, uh, I don't hold regrets in my life, but I would wish it, if you have the small me in your classroom now, I would wish it for her. It doesn't need to be a big thing. Just, you know, take out a look out the window at playtime and notice how people are fitting in. And don't presume, just because need isn't being signalled, that need isn't there. You may have met a child who expressed their difficulties through behaviour. I've known children who hit their heads on the tarmac, who bite their own hands, who throw chairs, who scream and kick and hurt others. Very, very clear communications of stress. And some people express that emotional anguish outwards and we see their pain. But others turn it inwards and it's like a silent bomb going off inside of them. The damage to self-esteem and emotional and mental well-being is huge. And so being aware that hidden differences may mean hidden need, whether that need is signalled or not, is really important. You have to consider what the purpose of our interventions are, of our support strategies, what's the point of them. Is the point of them our own convenience? That the school be a quieter, more organised place, that lessons uh, are conducted more smoothly, that tables remain unturned? Or is it to help the child? 
And it's the latter, of course. That's why you do the job. And if it's the latter, then we need to look to help the children who need it, whether they're signalling it or not. Because even if they're not causing inconvenience, what you can do to change their lives is massive. And in my next film, we're going to talk in more tangible terms about how we do this. And we're going to consider a child that falls somewhere between the two groups I've been describing here, of those that express their need through behaviour and those that don't.